morning, everybody. Why don't you stay standing just for a moment? If you're at home, if you're standing, just keep standing in the living room. If you're laying in bed, raise that bed up a little bit, prop it up a little bit, just sit up straight in it. Hey, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. I love it. Anybody just glad to be in church today? Got my friend Sihan with me from Louisville today by way of Texas, but now in Louisville. And, you know, I just, I noticed you a minute ago, Chris, he had his phone out like the whole worship service. And he leaned over and just in awe of what's happening here. And, you know, if you're not careful, you'll take moments like this for granted. You'll take a place like this for granted. Let me just tell you, it's special. It's not like this everywhere. This is an amazing, amazing house. And it's making a difference all over the world. The seeds you planted here are now in Louisville. And God's doing amazing things in Kentucky. Not only Kentucky, really the Kentucky Anna area. God's just kind of meshing us in that whole area. And he prepared long ago for us to be there. Just we're seeing that so evident in every conversation we've had. We've had 79 of them to be exact. We've got a spreadsheet I could show you. So many good conversations, people joining the team between those that have joined the team uh, locally and those that moved actually from Virginia. You know, in the middle of the pandemic, people moved from Virginia to Louisville to just see the mission advance. Between those two numbers, there's just shy of 60 people on the team. Two months in, seven months out from launch, 60 people. That's just incredible. The other night we had our first vision party. 22 people showed up. And uh, eight of them said, hey, I want to join the team on the spot. Check the card. Another eight said, hey, I'd like to go grab coffee because I think I'm ready. I just have a few more questions. I couldn't answer all their questions in a 20-minute interest party. And uh, so anyways, just amazing what God is doing. And let me just say this. Uh, I, want to, I want to thank you for the difference you're making here in Virginia. Specifically, I want to say a great big thank you to every kingdom builder, those that give so faithfully here at LifePoint Church. Because of your giving, because of your giving, we were able to, to launch out in the middle of a pandemic when most people would say, no, we need to hold off. We were able to put the gas on and go full steam ahead because a year ago, months ago, this church said, hey, we're gonna sow into what God's doing. We believe that, that the vision's going beyond us. And I'm just happy to report that God is moving in Louisville. And there are people there that are gonna sit in seats that you will never meet. You will never probably sit in a seat in Louisville, but you were responsible. You were responsible for, for paying for that seat. You were responsible. You're sacrificed. Pastor says it all the time. Great churches aren't built on the talents of a few, but the sacrifice of many. And I want you to know your sacrifice is already being felt. And so I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're making a difference. Pastor Daniel, I love you. I'd take up the whole clock if I told you how much I love you. You mean more than anything to me. The other night I was having a, a tough evening and the enemy was trying to stop something and I picked up the phone and guess who the first person I called was? Pastor Daniel. And because uh, he's just a good, he's a good pastor. And he knows how to work through situations. And I'm so thankful I have a pastor in Pastor Daniel. And uh, would you just let your pastor know how much you love him? All right, let me get into the word here. I got a word today. I haven't been on a stage in three months, and so devil, get ready. No. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse number one, it says, After a long time, in the third year, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. That's what I'm believing is happening today. The word of the Lord is going to come to somebody. It said, Go and present yourself to Ahab, and I will, future tense, I'm going to send rain on the land. God, I'm ready for rain. We need some rain in our country. We need you to rain across our globe. He said, I will send rain on the land. Verse number 41, and Elisha said to Ahab, go eat and drink for there's a sound of heavy rain. And so Ahab went off and ate and drink in the midst of a famine. And Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel, bowed down to the ground, put his face between his knees and told his servant, go look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked and he came back and he said this, there is nothing. Seven times Elijah said, go back. 
And the seventh time the servant reported a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, that's enough. Go tell Ahab, hitch up your chariots. Go down before the rain stops you. And meanwhile, the skies grew black with clouds. The wind rose and a heavy rain started falling. And Ahab rode off to Jezreel. The power of the Lord came on Elisha. And tucking his cloak into his belt, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. Let me pray for us, Father. I thank you so much for the word that you put in my heart today for your people. Father, I just pray that it comes forth as clearly as you gave it to me. I pray that you put your anointing on it because I am not enough. But God, I pray that you would speak directly to the hearts of people, that your word, it would be sharper than any double-edged sword today. It would pierce all the way down to our very core. Would you do a work today that no man can do but just would be evidence at the end of this service that surely God was in this place, a work of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. 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 Hey, why don't you guys have a seat? If you're taking notes today, I'm preaching from the title. And you got to have a good title, right? Anytime you have a sermon. Preaching from the title, The Land of Nothing. The Land of Nothing. Let me see if I can work that phrase a little bit. Have you ever thought about the word nothing? I mean, seriously, uh, if you think about that word nothing, you know what it means? Nothing. I looked it up in the Greek, looked it up in the Hebrew, and in both occasions, the word literally means nothing. It means that there is a lack of, that there is, there, there, there where you want there to be something, there is just void. There is nothing. If you think about that, um, how many of you guys are into the, to the gym? Maybe you, you're, you're into the gym. Any runners in the house? I am not a runner. Any runners online? I am not a runner. If you see me running, something has surely happened. I am probably running for, from, for my life, honestly. Um, somebody is behind me. Help me. Um, but have you, ever, have you ever thought, you know what, I'm going to get into running. And so you buy the new shoes. You can't go running without looking good. You know what I'm saying? So you bought the new shoes. You bought the new clothes because even if you're not going to be a good runner, you're going to at least look the part. You lace them up, you download Couch to 5K, because that's what every runner starting needs to download. You get the Nike watch, you spent $3,000 preparing for your first run, and you get out there and you run. In fact, you spend the whole week doing Couch to 5K, and then at the end of the week, you step on the scale on Sunday, and you look down at the scale expecting to have lost at least 29.3 pounds, and you look down on it, and you realize... Nothing. (laughs) See, sometimes life is just like that. You can walk through lands of nothing. Maybe that isn't for you, but maybe this year you decided to invest in True Green. (laughs) Sorry, True Green. I love you. You decided to invest in True Green, right? I shouldn't name names on that. But you, 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 you seeded. You oversprayed. You undersprayed. You did all the spraying you were supposed to. You got the sprinkler system. You spent $10,000 a month on your water bill. And now, here it is in July, and you're looking at your grass six months in saying, that's it? That looks like nothing. In fact, everything is dead. And you feel like you're walking through a land of nothing. Or maybe for you, you're a parent. I have a toddler, he is three years old, and he refuses to be potty trained. I'm like, Samuel, you're going to have to get this because daddy cannot buy $45 boxes of diapers for the rest of my life. And every day we have bribed him. We have given him things. We have taken him to the grocery store. And guess what? Nothing. And I feel like I'm constantly in a state of just walking through a land of nothing. Nothing's ever going to change. Nothing's ever going to get better. He's never going to learn how to do this. But maybe for you, if I were to go around this room and I would just kind of start over here and sweep my hand over front to back, top to bottom, I could probably have a conversation with you if I were to sit in your living room today have a conversation with you where you could tell me about seasons or lands of nothing that you've walked through. You filled out the job application. You filled out the job application. 
You went and bought the outfit. You dressed for success. You called your wife in, your husband in. They asked you your three top strengths. They asked you your three top weaknesses. You were ready to crush the interview. And you walked into the interview. You thought you did an amazing job. And then you came home and you waited for the email. You waited for the phone call. And guess what? Nothing. And you walk through lands of nothing. All of us could tell stories of lands of nothing. Maybe for you, it was a relationship. Or it was a relationship that you thought was going somewhere. You thought the relationship was headed to marriage. You thought the relationship was headed to engagement. And then he said something or she said something. And now here you are alone. And you feel like nobody loves you. Or you felt like this is never going to change. And it had nowhere. And you just walked through a land of nothing. We all have those stories. We all have stories where we feel like, man, something's got to break, but it just doesn't appear to be breaking today. And you just walk through seasons. You walk through moments of just what feels like there's never going to be any gain. There's never going to be any harvest. But here's what I also know. Not only have all of us walked through those moments or will walk through those moments, but some of us today, we're walking in that moment right now. That right now you're in a moment where you feel like you're walking in a land of nothing. Man, in this season, it's so easy to feel like that because everything just seems to be moving at a different pace. And you wonder if it's ever gonna change with your job. You wonder if it's ever gonna bounce back. You've been stuck in the house way too long and your marriage seems to be falling apart and you just feel like, man, I'm walking in a season of nothing. And that's exactly where Elijah found himself in this story. The Bible says for three years, three and a half years to be exact, he was walking and not only himself, but the nation of Israel was walking through a drought. That drought had came and this drought was so severe that it caused major, major famine across the land. Famine was taking in and he just walked through this land and this season of nothing. You know, as I think about the drought that Elijah was walking through in that season, I thought, you know what? Isn't that so true? That there are times in all of our lives where not only that we walk through lands of nothing, but we just have these drought type experiences that go through our life. We have droughts in our finances. We have droughts in our relationships. We have droughts in our relationship with God. And on the outside, it may look like everything's going good. On the outside, it may look like to other people, you know what, they're fine. He's fine, she's fine, they're doing great. But you know what I've noticed about walking through lands of nothing and drought sometimes? On the surface, you could look great, but inside you can be dry. Sometimes there are just moments in our life where everything appears to be fine, but on the inside, you're so tired and you're so weary and you're so thirsty for water because you just seem to be in a dry place. And if we're not careful, those dry places can overtake us. If we're not careful, the drought that comes on us can, can just kind of like sit on us. And, and, and then we begin saying things like, this is just my lot in life. This is just the, the, the hand that I was dealt. This is never gonna go away. This is always how it's gonna be. I'm never, I'm always gonna be, you know, uh, the bridesmaid, never the bride. I'm always gonna be in this situation. This is just who I am. Things are never gonna change. And drought mentalities can just start coming on us. And that is a horrible place to be. And so for three and a half years, there is this drought, and I can only imagine the mentality of the people. And the Bible says that the word of the Lord comes to Elijah, and he says, go and present yourself to Ahab. I'm sending rain to the land. I just believe that God wanted me to come this weekend to encourage somebody. You know, I could have preached a message on just how to survive the drought, but I don't want to just survive a drought. I need rain. I don't just want to get through things. No, God, I want to come out of things. And the word of the Lord comes to him and says, I'm going to send rain. And I believe that there's somebody in this room today and there's somebody at a campus today. There's somebody watching online that the word of the Lord for you is this. I'm going to send rain. I'm sending rain to your situation. I'm sending rain to your dry soul. 
Oh, you don't have to be weary anymore. Oh, you don't have to be tired anymore. I'm sending rain to you. And so Elisha goes and he tells King Ahab after that, he goes to Ahab, pull it up here. Says he goes to Ahab and says, hey, Ahab, go and eat and drink for there is a sound of heavy rain. Now, if you've been in the middle of a famine and somebody tells you, hey, go eat and drink, it's easy to kind of cautiously avoid that. Like, are you sure? Go eat and drink. And Elijah looks at him with certainty and says, hey, go eat and drink. There is a sound of heavy rain. Now, here's what's interesting about that phrase, there is a sound of heavy rain, or I hear the sound of Elijah says another translation of an abundance of rain. You know, sometimes you've got to realize, and if you're taking notes, you could walk, write this down, that in life, we've got to walk by faith and not by sight. That we've got to realize that, that sometimes in life, we're not always going to see things changing, but that doesn't mean they aren't getting better. And Elijah looks at the king and he just says, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. I love what the scripture says in Hebrews, that faith, that faith is what? It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that are not yet seen. And I want to be a faith preacher. I want to be a faith Christian. I want to live by faith and say, you know what? I may not see it taking place. It may not look like my situation's changing. I may look like I'm walking in the middle of a drought. But you know what? I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. I hear the sound of the doctor coming in and saying you're healed. I may not be healed yet, but I hear the sound of it. I hear the sound of my husband walking back through the door. Come on, is there anybody saying that? I hear the sound of him walking back through the door. The marriage may look like it's still rocky, but I hear the sound of the spouse walking back through. I may not have a job yet. I hear the sound of being the email coming through. I don't even know where the church is going to be in Louisville. We don't have a building yet, but I hear the sound of thousands of people worshiping because I've just got faith for it. I got a rain mindset. I don't got a drought mindset. I need somebody in this room to have a rain mindset to say, I hear the sound of it. I don't have to see it to believe it. I don't have to see rain to know that my God can send rain. I just hear this. I hear the sound from people from the front to the back here filled up again. I hear the sound of people wrapped around this building coming in to know Christ. I can see it. I can hear it. I can feel it. Because I will not let a drought mentality get in my spirit. Got to hear the sound of it. The enemy wants to do havoc on your mindset. Enemy wants to keep you thinking, well, if you can't see it, then it must, must not be so. And Elijah said, I hear the sound of it. And notice the next thing he does. He sends King Ahab to go off and eat and drink. And then he goes up on a mountain and he takes a posture of prayer. If you're writing notes down, I want you to write this down. One of the things you can do between rain coming, okay, like I'm sending it and then it actually falling is not only do you need to have a faith mindset, but you need to stay in a posture of prayer. And Elisha climbs up and he could just say, you know what, I'm just going to stand up here and kind of, kind of look around and wait for it. No, he says, no, I'm going to get in the right posture. I'm going to know who the source is. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that I'm praying to the rainmaker. Gets on his knees, and I'm not a yoga preacher. I can't do what TJ did last week with all this, like, laying down and stuff. So you just have to imagine with me. I mean, he gets down on his knees. The Bible says he puts his face between his knees. Actually, when you look up that passage of Scripture, that kind of phrase there in the Hebrew, it's the same phrase that would later be used when it says Elijah actually laid himself over the dead boy later on. It's just this, like, prostrate surrender, like, God, I need you kind of position. And he goes to his servant and he says, hey, go look towards the sea. TJ, why don't you help me real quick? He tells the servant, go look towards the sea. So here I am. I need you to go up there and see if you see a cloud. So if you don't mind, will you go look for me? 
TJ's a good guy. We're just going to let him run up those stairs like Rocky. Can you do like a fist pump in the air or something while you're running or something like that? Gosh, you're, I thought you worked out, man. That's pretty slow. See, TJ was an intern, and he wreaked havoc for me for years, and this is payback right here, making you run up those stairs. What do you mean there's nothing? Like, are you sure you looked in the right place? There's no rain. Wait, I thought God said he was sending the rain. Maybe we should go <laughs> tell Ahab to slow down on the food and drink. Go look again. And he just stays in this posture of prayer. And he says, you know what? I'm going to do the right thing in the middle of a dry season while I'm waiting. Guys, that's what 21 days of prayer is all about. 21 days of prayer is so important because our posture has to be right in dry seasons. And some of you right now, you're walking in a dry season and your posture matters. Hey, go back, TJ. Seven times it says he went back seven times. I'm going to let this play out because that's how a dry season feels. A dry season feels like this is never going to end. This is never going to change. Things are never going to get better. A dry season will make you tired. I mean, this guy is running in a Bane mask up and down. I'm glad that thing has a vent in it. This guy's running up and down the stairs, and he is tired, and he is wore out. Go again, man, seven times. And this is how it feels to be in a dry season. And I just want to encourage you, you can't give up. You can't get weary. You can't get tired. You've got to keep pressing. And you've got to keep pressing the right way. And Elijah, the guy comes back. It's not here. Just like the walls of Jericho, I started thinking about it. One time they marched around. Guess what? They didn't fall. March again. Naaman, dipping in the water, dips in there one time. I'm not healed. Dip again. Sometimes you just got to go again and again and again and say, you know what? God may not have sent the rain today, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to stop. God may have not sent the rain. You know, yesterday, I'm going to keep pressing. I'm going to keep praying. I think you got two more in you, TJ. I've counted five. Come on. This is how it feels. Are you tired? Are you wore out? But you can't quit. You can't stop in the middle of a dry season. You got to make sure that you got a lot of faith and you got to make sure you're pressing into the right things. So often in the middle of dry seasons, you know what we press into? We'll phone a friend. We'll try to Facebook our way out of it. We'll try to work our way out of it. We'll try to talk our way out of it. But there's some things you just have to pray your way out of. And so if you're in a dry season right now, man, what's your posture like? Are you fighting the right way? So the enemy got you, got you so depressed, so worked up, so stressed out. You're fighting the wrong battle. And Elijah prayed. And finally, the servant came back. There's a cloud, but it's small. There's a cloud? But it's small. Thank you, TJ. It may seem small. It may seem insignificant. It may not look like much. It may just be the size of a man's hand, but there's a cloud. It may seem insignificant to go home and just get another email today for another interview, but maybe it's a cloud. It may seem insignificant to just get a text today from a spouse you haven't talked to in six months. You thought it was heading toward divorce, and the text comes, and it's a cloud. There is a cloud. I'm believing you're going to walk out of here, some of you today, and you're going to see a cloud. Oh, it may only be the size of a man's hand, but it's enough to bring rain. It's enough to start something. Oh, that cloud that was just a little small man's hand. It grew black later and it grew bigger. The skies begin to open up. Rain begin to fall. I, Elisha told Ahab, hey, you better go. You better send your chariots down because that small cloud is about to produce a rainstorm and you don't need to get stuck on this mountain. You need to go. And I'm just here to say that sometimes a small cloud can be bring great rain. Sometimes a small cloud that may not seem like God's doing much can bring a great harvest in your life. Galatians 6, 4. It's a life first for me. Don't get weary. Don't 
get tired doing good for in due season you're gonna reap a harvest if you don't give up don't stop running on the sixth lap but keep pressing through don't give up in this season don't give up in this time where it's so easy to give up it's so easy just to cow down it's so easy to get fearful it's so easy to just say nothing's ever gonna change nothing's ever gonna break nothing's ever i don't want to live that way no i was talking to somebody back in the back a moment ago we're talking about the people of god in this season the people of god need to stand up we need to be full of faith man i just i'm just so fearful at times that a drought mentality is getting a hold of us and we have to be the ones speaking faith. We have to be the ones saying, I may not see a change. We may not see anything getting better right now, but I hear an abundance of rain coming. You may look around and it may not look like things are changing, but I hear rain. I hear black and brown and white worshiping together in unity. I hear racial tensions falling to the wayside. a seat because if we don't believe that here's here's what the enemy wants to do let me read this to you it's not on the screen but if you look at chapter 19 verse number three it says this right after God sends the rain right after he sees the small cloud he knows something's coming he runs 17 miles ahead of it. I'm only, I can only imagine it, but I'm sure he could, he could just, he could feel it in the air as the downpour was coming. And it says that King Ahab comes off the mountain and he's standing there with his wife, Jezebel, who is a very wicked person in this time in fact just a few verses later Elijah would stand up to the prophets of Baal and God would do a great miracle and now here Jezebel is and she is ticked that God has won again that God has brought rain again that God is making a difference that he is bringing healing he is bringing an end to famine he is bringing rain to a drought and she is so frustrated and angry she sends a messenger to say go kill Elijah today is his last day he will not rep this God anymore he will not stand for this we can't have this in our kingdom and it says in verse number nine or chapter number 19 verse 3 and Elijah was afraid the Bible says he ran for his life when he came to Beersheba and Judah he left his servant there I mean this guy just called rain down from heaven he watched God be the rainmaker in his life. And he should be standing here saying, come at me, queen. You don't know the God I serve. I just watched him do something special with the prophets of Baal. I just watched the rain come after a drought. Come at me. My God is with me. But that's not what happened. And in this season where God wants to send rain, that rain is right like on your front door. There's a real enemy that also wants to send fear. And the Bible says that he left the person that he was just standing on a mountaintop with. Isn't it crazy that the enemy wants to isolate you from people that are standing on mountaintops with you? That's why small groups are so important. You need people in your life that you can say, hey, go check for rain, go look for rain. And the enemy isolates him in that moment. And now he is alone and he is hiding in a cave out of fear. 
I was praying the other day and I was thinking about this message and I was thinking about this word and I thought, you know what, it would be so easy to just end this message with like so much hype about the rain is coming and God is sending it and small hand, great cloud, you know, all that stuff. And then I read this verse and I thought, oh my gosh, even when the rain comes, though, the enemy's going to do his best to try to fight it. And I got to tell them because they've got to be aware of the enemy's plan. That's why Jesus told, told, said, said in Mark, I believe it's chapter Mark, where he says, Simon, Simon, Satan is desiring to sift you as wheat. Satan wants to stir you up. He's trying a lot harder, I promise you, to keep you in a drought than you think. And so Elijah runs in fear in a cave. And here he is in fear. And I think that's what the enemy wants to do to you in this season. He wants you to look one way so scared to death that you can't see the rain coming over here. You know what you can't see in a cave? You can't see a cloud. You can't see a cloud in a cave. You're not going to feel rain in a cave. No, it's going to be a dark place. It's going to be a lonely place. It's going to be a place of isolation, a place where you wonder and a place where you wonder if things will or are things changing. And the enemy wants to put you in that place. And here's what I think is happening in this season that's even more crazy. If we're not careful, we'll get so focused on one area and so fearful in one area that we won't see the rain that God is sending in another area. And this season will put us spiritually in a cave and it will cause us to miss out on what God wants to do and I just have to let somebody know today we have to stop thinking that the only rain in this season is just a vaccine that the only rain in this season is just this thing going away that we're walking through God wants to do so much more yes he wants to rain in that area but yes he wants to rain in your marriage and yes he wants to rain and if you get so fearful in a cave and you get so scared over here, you will not experience the rain. And so don't get stuck in a cave. God reign on our land. I still believe that God could heal our land. I believe that God is healing. Somebody in the room just said he will. He is. Even when I don't see that he's working, he's working. So we can look for a cloud. We can look at the media. We can look for a cloud. We can bury ourselves in a cave. I want to be a person that looks for clouds. I want to be a person that's expectant. And I want us to have a church with people full of faith. It says even when we don't see that he's working, he's working. Rain's coming. Rain's coming. God, I need your rain. God, we need your rain. Come on, would you just receive that? Hey, I hope today's message was helpful for your life. I want to tell you, you should subscribe. The reason why, you can get content pushed to you all the time. You don't have to wonder if you ever missed anything. And also, I want you to think about giving. By giving, you can help us take this message to so many other people that are in need of some hope, need of some encouragement, and you can be a part of making a difference in the life of so many people. Look forward to seeing you right back here next time.